Alrighty, beautiful people. Here we are back in the podcast chairs. We've changed the changed the uh, setup up a little bit just to see how it goes. Mitch hates it. Yeah, I had it. I'm uh I'm somewhere in the middle and no, you're literally in the yeah, literally in the middle, literally in the middle. And Tyler's all about it. So and I like see. it. I was just sick of having to crank my neck. I always cop the middle seat, mate. You're literally the- looking at me over your shoulder at the moment. So. Sorry. So anyway, so basically, the plan for today is we'll jump on, we'll chat about what's been happening, chat about a few, few exciting things, talk about, uh, just talk about what's going on. Um, anything front of mind, boys? Hold on. Do let, we- me, let me press a button. Let's see what happens. Where's your car, dude? Dude, where's my car? Where's your car, dude? I'm really happy about this car. Did I drive last night? Yeah, I think so. Really? I'm not sure. <laughs> dude, where's your car? <laughs> dude, it's not funny, dude. The car is gone. <laughs> yeah. Dude, where's my car? <laughs> Shut up, dude. True or false? Was that you yesterday morning? <laughs> don't know. Don't know the reference you're talking about. <laughs> dude. Potentially. At 5.15 in the morning. What a time to be alive. <clears throat> give us a rundown it's because not the words I would use. Give us give us a rundown. I want it, we want to hear everything uh, about it. The Virtus I've, family wants to hear about I've it. I've deliberately not asked you so I could save it for this. Yes. Wonderful Same. like I've had thirty people in the last twenty four hours ask me about this, so this it's pretty uh in depth and concise this story now. Our, our thirty uh, listeners are gonna uh, yeah. gonna Gonna, gonna get the download. You're gonna get more during the week, and no. I can't wait to tell you to shut the fuck up about your no, car no, and to I'm stop not, and to nah, stop bringing it up, just gonna, like you did with my coffee cup. Did you lose his coffee cup? That that's that's second that's the first get, I've actually heard of it. Don't get me started. That's the first I've heard of it. Rumor has it it's probably still in the four walls or so. I reckon it's in here somewhere. So do I. I reckon Tyler lost it. <laughs> I reckon he, he put he it somewhere. Absolutely a perfect idea of where it is, and he just doesn't know. I'm sick of people insulting my intelligence, saying, "Are you sure you just didn't leave it home?" Are you sure it's not in your car? Who you are mimicking there? I reckon it's I reckon it's oh. under your seat in the car at home. Don't insult or, my intelligence. Um, yeah, back on back on the uh, the car. So Mitchell didn't rock up to work yesterday morning. Yeah, you all didn't, thought I was sleeping. Stock didn't standard hear for though. A couple of hours. So, th- <laughs> so <laughs> thought he was sleeping. Thought he was dead for a moment, you and did. then got a message. Well, nine it's nice to eight. know my presence is uh, when it's not here. It's felt. It yeah, felt it, it was felt um, because I had to actually work for a couple of hours. But That's true. tell us the story. Because I got a message at eight thirty saying that you were on the way to Cranbourne Police Station. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was car. already there at that stage. Uh, well, I am an organised man, so I have all my shit ready before I go to work. Close out, keys, phone, wallet, drink bottle, all next to my, uh, all next to each other on the desk. I got out of bed at four forty ish. Can't really remember. My phone, my watch is. I've seen alarm on my watch at the moment, so my phone is not in like the room, which I've been loving, by the way. But I had noticed that my phone and keys and wallet weren't there on the desk in the morning. And, yeah, neither was my car. So On your desk? You keep carrying on your desk. Yeah. We're going to go like that, are we? Low, that was low hanging fruit. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> it's too easy. I'm here that for sucked. it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, didn't have a car. So, because obviously, you know, you're in a haze for the first 30 minutes waking up that early. What was... Uh, I went for a wander Did around the, the estate. Start, I the thought, heart you know, start pumping. Nah, not really, because like, what what can you do in that fucking situation? The last thing I would think though is that someone stole my car. I, I would, well, I would just wig out and think, what have I done? Weren't there on the desk, and I was like, oh, okay, I know I put these here. So the nitty gritty is what I actually don't know yet. So he went into your house and yeah, so how did the dogs not out let you know about it? Yeah, so the thing came over the back fence and then in the side door. And I've never used the side door in my house, so for all I know, it probably was just fucking open. <laughs> it's definitely locked now, though. Um, and, yeah, just went on back out. There was nothing on, like, the security... I don't have cameras where my neighbours do, but there's nothing on the front of the house <laughs> besides my car driving off. <laughs> so it must have been over the back. Because you've got a side camera, don't you? Nah. Did live nah, in nah, I haven't put it in yet. Right. Are, you, are you a bit <laughs> rattled with the fact that someone's in your house while you're sleeping? And yeah, no, but like, do you reckon they like looked over you and just like gave you a stroke, gave you a kiss on the Well, cheek, the dogs on the lips. sleep in my room with the door shut. Yeah, so that's yeah. why the dogs. Surely yeah. they would have heard. something. Surely their senses would have I been mean, tingling. You see my dogs sleep. Seen, yeah, they fucking no, sleep. They're out cold. <laughs> so yeah, I went for like a half an hour little wander around the estate. I didn't have a phone or anything, so I was like, well, I can't do anything about this. They'll deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he stole your phone too, or did he not? Yeah, that's. This is not my phone. This is a borrowed phone with a new SIM. So my old SIM is deactivated by the like serial number, so you can do that shit now. 
of that. And then I just got a new SIM with the same number and I'm an adult, so we- I save my stuff to the cloud like adults do. We uh, yeah. Almost just he, in the he, he doesn't even know what be real is. So yeah, I'm surprised he knows what the cloud is. These are two completely different conversations. We we'll need get to, to that. We'll be real conversation. That's a later today, conversation. Um, so yeah, you 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 tick the legs over around the estate. Yeah, for like half an hour maybe. Yeah. Didn't think to shoot me a message. Maybe on your laptop. <laughs> shoot well, me I didn't have my laptop. It was in the car. So okay, I went food okay, shopping. So th- yeah, okay. I went food shopping the night before, and yep. it was after work. So food shopping. I did the same thing. Back seat, like all my bag and stuff, because I had the food and stuff on the front seat. So I left my bag in the back seat, which was there when I got my car back. So that didn't change anything. Oh, good. But no phone, <laughs> no keys, no wallet, no laptop. And it's 6 a.m. <laughs> so not a lot open, slash not a lot of people awake at that time. So yeah. I... How far to the... Uh, took me like an hour Clyde 15. Police how Station. Many, how many clicks to the Clyde Police Station? It was like an hour and 15 Ugh. walk. Well, not bad. I mean, as I said, the, like, the, the amount of You've people... a bit. Yeah, but the amount of people that have been like, what are you stressed? I'm like, what can I do? Yeah. Like, you, yeah. It's, fuck, that, it is what it is. It's like, a choice. You either yeah. freak out or... <laughs> exactly. Except my car's gone. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> what can you fucking do? So there's no point freaking Dude, out, stressing balls, running around in circles. Like, <laughs> just fucking... Just, I'm an action guy, so just go sort it out. So I walked to the police station and, yeah, my car was there. <laughs> You told me you tried to rob a petrol station. Like, yeah, is, so is that like yeah, a fill up and go, like or like BP. literally held it up? No, no. So it was left at like a BP. Re- rewind a little bit. You, did you walk in this, uh, into the? Petrol no, I didn't station. say, dude. Where's my car? Is no, that what you're getting at? No. <laughs> you walk into the police station. Be like, so uh, that's my car. No, nah, because I couldn't see it, so I didn't okay, know so it. So it, wasn't so I like it was in, in the car. Yeah, park. I was like, I'm pretty sure I had my car stolen. And they're like, you know, what's your retro? Yep. Describe it, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, we got one of them. I was like, oh, that's good. We <laughs> got, got, got one of those out <laughs> there. Yeah, the back. They were pretty nice about it. Yeah. And like, I'm pretty nonchalant about most things. They were like, you're all right. I was like, yeah, like, fuck, whatever. Like, it happened. Um, we thought it was just the most elaborate lie ever because you've had some you've had some doozies like a tree down in the middle of the road when you're running oh, late when it's fucking 60k winds and you've hit a deer it rained, it rained <laughs> 80 mil deer. I've never hit a deer I've never <laughs> used that he's I like I thought I saw Santa so I started chasing him I ended fucking up in 80 in mil of rain I live in the sticks there's gonna be some fucking roads down trees down <laughs> um, but, ask but, Steph Newen she comes the same way she yeah, gets it so as you're as you're walking well Steph uh, shout out to Steph. Coach Steph. Steph, coach 6am. Yeah. Um, I was planning on coming into train, but decided on the extra sleep, which, you know, was was needed. Um, but yeah, Steph just got to it. Coach Steph. Yeah, coach Steph. So, might have to, uh, might have to hire another coach. Um, but as Holiday you're walking coach. into the police station, we're like, because you're a man that lives out of his car. No, I just have lots of shoes in my car. You're a man that has a floor drobe. You have like no, no. A, there's no clothes in my car at all. No, nothing. No, there's a hoodie no, in the front you're seat. You're a man that a does have a significant amount of things in his car, though. Shoes. So where you're sitting there going, "Fuck, I've just dropped all this cash at." at nah, night. that's nah, the first thing I was thinking. Nah, because they live all my nice stuff live at home in the in my car. I have functional things. Okay, so I've got a casual hoodie because we've got this one all the time. It gets a bit hot and heavy. I've got Matt Collins to train it. I've got um, lifters to train in. I've got footy boots and I have got my pair of runners. Okay. It's so like they're functional shoes. Mm-hmm. They just I couldn't eat them at some stage, so I just leave them in the car. But that was it. So okay. I wasn't. I wasn't so, so, about that. so nothing too worried. No. Worried about the laptop. Everything. No, I haven't seen the car market there. recently. Like part of me thought it was kind of like up a hill or something because you can get some money back for cars nowadays. It's true. I was like, you know, new car, you know, whatever. Uh, Would insurance cover you for that on a hypothetical? Say, just like torched it. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> You're not you get the old Tyler Frost upgrade. <laughs> the old Tyler Frost upgrade. <laughs> yeah, you fucking the, pay that guy off. The inside job. Yeah. Um, so, Great yeah, it was was like. it was left at a BP and the guy did a runner. So, there's nothing so, on my car. Okay, so he drove it to a BP, mm-hmm. tried to it's hold like it up. five minutes down the road. Yeah. yeah. Tried to hold it up, was unsuccessful. Yeah. And there... Probably couldn't have gone to, like, the <clears throat> newest BP that it's been over for, like, six months. <laughs> so, <laughs> probably some pretty good measures there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, did a runner and left my shit there. So, have they caught him? I have no idea. They're like, "Oh, do you want to find out this?" Keep, keep, and I was like, keep, keep "Nah, back, not really." Like, I don't. Nothing. Yeah, it's all locked away. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Oh, do you want to find out this? That? Do you want to know the outcome?" I was like, 
Not really. Like, I got my shit back. Nothing really changed. Had a morning. Whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Like, it's a good story. And like most people, when I have that kind of nonchalantness, they look at me like I had three heads. I'm like, no, I don't really care. Like, what's it going to change? Like, I mean, it's, it's a good... It's, uh, it's another thing that I don't need to think about. It's a good lesson in controlling what we can. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, it's so nothing to do about. what was the... Uh, yeah, what was the, the wash up like? Getting your, getting your car sorted, I had, getting it... Yeah, they had to obviously do the old fucking forensics and shit like that. Yep. And then I just had to wait for them to finish that off, sign some papers, release my car and... <laughs> Drove <to> Saints. <laughs> <laughs> filmed, filmed a reel for one of our players and back to real that was yeah. Back to real life. Yeah, back to real life, literally. Yeah. She wanted me she's sponsored by Under Armour, so she had to put together like a sponsored ad thing. So I filmed that and we trained and there went out. Slept like a baby and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. It is what it is. Like fuck you can't do nothing about it. Great story, but it is a good story. It's like it's like if you're looking for a reason to be to not be at work, I mean it probably checks out. And well, I was laughing because I was like, you guys just think I'm fucking still asleep. So I was Seriously. having a good laugh. <laughs> I sent you a wake up message. And, and then so my next door neighbors, uh, two of them work night shift. So I knew they weren't home. And the other two next to me have like, I think they have two or three kids. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> you guys aren't awake. <laughs> Not whacking on the door. Yeah, exactly. They probably would have been awake to be honest. And like by that stage, it was like seven-ish before I started like my, my long venture. It was like seven. And I was like, well, it's not really changing. I think someone's there doing something at work. So, <laughs> clients are pretty self-sufficient. Someone will be there. This Lucky is, lives uh, two minutes away. Tyler, yeah. yeah. This is this is true. We and are, I don't mean it in like a yeah. You could be right, guys. Someone else like, it, Fuck, I can't do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is how the how we work, right? We <laughs> we figure it out. We figure it out, and then um, aren't we all just figuring the, it out? Do the best we can. Yeah. Well, uh, well, old mate, you know, holding up BP poorly. Um, yeah, very weird morning. <laughs> it is. It is strange. Um, Wonder why I picked out your house of all the houses on your street. <coughs> I don't know. Well, there's no cars you. next to mine because oh, of the night shift, both of them. And then there's like a Bunnings like state car next to it. So, just fucking, for all we know, he might have tried a few backyards. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> and no one else had left the left the back door unlocked. Um, and he's thinking, "What an idiot! We're on." Yes, we are on. But also, fuck my dogs. Wake up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon this one sitting over here would give us a give us an earful if yeah, something like that happened. Yeah, my two out cold gave me nothing. It's <laughs> great. Um, Tyler, you had a similar similar experience. Mm, so a few weeks ago, I went home to Hamilton, <coughs> and do you, live, do you come from Hamilton? I oh, do you come from Hamilton. I come from the Hamilton. sticks. See the it flooded the other day. Sort of. Yeah, it did yeah. flooded uh, about half. It a did foot flooded. <laughs> it did. <laughs> It did be wet. <laughs> About half a foot of water, yeah. So it's got a flood alert from it, the bureau. It caused some headaches. Um, yeah. But was going through the cupboards and found a nice, you know, brand spanking new Frank Green, like, coffee cups. What, this what, what we're it? talking about. Did you, steal, did, you steal your, did you steal your mother's Frank Green coffee Yeah, well, after bitching and moaning that this cost me 70 bucks. No, I don't think I ever said that. <laughs> I said... <laughs> Do you it's valued you at about <laughs> 70 bucks. Um, parents aren't coffee drinkers, so I said, hey, can I take that? Because I think they got it as a freebie. Yeah. And said, sure. And I took that back to Mornington. So excited to use my new, <laughs> so excited to use my new oh, cup. Whacked it in the cupboard. Carry on about this cup, I tell you Above what. the sink in the movement prep area. That was Monday at about 11 a.m. Sure? 100%. Okay. I've tried to find the security footage, but it's like finding a needle in a haystack. It's... <laughs> It's not going to be done. The fact that you went through it in the first place, though. Yeah. I spent about half an hour on it and just, <laughs> you know, time is money. And I'd, I could buy five Frank Greens with the money of, <laughs> with the time I've spent trying to find the Frank Green that I lost. It's true. That got stolen, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, 11 a.m. Monday, whacked it in the cupboard. First thing Tuesday, probably 7, 8 a.m., tonguing for a coffee. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> and it's not there. Side. Gone. <laughs> So, between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Monday night, someone took it. <laughs> Who was coaching? That would be yourself. Uh, yeah, I wasn't here. Yeah. Um, would have been me. Um. So, my first <laughs> instinct was, you've taken it. So Your I've second one was me. I was like, what <laughs> my second one was me. Me. So, I've dirtied up and sent a... <laughs> passive-aggressive. It was a passive-aggressive no, message in the... There was no passiveness <laughs> about it. In the uh, communications app. <laughs> well, it's so known as Slack. A Slack, <laughs> just for, for those that don't know. <laughs> Fuck it. Um... And you've thrown and yeah, you've, no thro- one you've thrown some accusations. Absolutely. So I think we need to talk about talk about that. And the bathwater the was the trust tossed. That, the trust that has been lost. 
Yeah, so I could probably take a few pages out of Mitch's book, <laughs> losing his car, compared to me losing my Frank Green, but that's the principle of the thing. <laughs> the best part about it was when he said it, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Did First of all, thing existed? who the fuck is Frank Green? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never heard of her. <laughs> okay, good. Um, um, and, you have, and you didn't find it? No, nah, but found the good people at Common Folk <laughs> sorted me out with a replacement fresco cap. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's one extreme to the other. Hey, oh fuck it all. I um, yeah, I, I hold the belief that it's somewhere in here. Um, Same. No, no one. Yeah, I we've been do, we've been doing this a long time. Now I don't think it was like a malicious thing. I think yeah. someone's just taken it like, oh hey, I'll bring that back. And yeah. so so maybe maybe it's out there. Maybe if you're listening and you know where Tyler's, well, give us a color, give us a description. How many, uh, how many six ounces? one. Ocean head. blue. Ocean, Ocean blue. blue. Yeah. Oh, well, nice I deep. Like one of those. That's a deep blue. Maybe KP stole it and give it to for Christmas. And it says Salesforce on it. So I would pay good money for someone to bring it back wrapped as a Christmas Christmas gift for Tyler. I will yeah. pay good money for someone to do that. I still yeah. think it's a bit of a sick joke. And Jeff Deck. He gen- he's he's my main culprit. Thinks we've done it. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks we still have it. I, can, I, I, I can see it in his eyes. I organised a new one for you. So. <laughs> I don't nah, give a shit. I don't know what he posted. <laughs> but I, I did write on the new one. But. Property of Tyler Frost, if found, please. I'm just looking first. forward for the next week or so for Mitch to get peppered with questions by the members about his missing car so I can finally say to him, fuck up about nah, your missing fair. car because. No, nah, that's fine. I, I haven't brought up, up my coffee cup <laughs> at this all. This is the difference. People. You, you have to I've had to in. field 500 questions. This is uh, part uh, of Jazz's <laughs> uh, PD as a human is leaning into banter. I'll just accept the fact you just get a little aggressive. <laughs> Oh, good. All right, well, 16 minutes, 16 minutes of absolute nonsense. So, shall we start talking about some actual things? Mm. So oh, They were pretty actual. They were actual. They were actual. <laughs> the that, was actually, that was actually phenomenal. I, <laughs> oh, mate. The amount of carry-on that you've brought about that coffee cup has seriously rocked me. I'm questioning it's my It's that existence. look that comes with yeah, it, too. He's, he's just a he's scowl. Like, this is serious. I've lost my car. Well, it's the principle of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one thing I want to talk about is our is the interns that are just finishing up. So um, obviously, you're gonna we, podcast them? Uh, maybe, maybe if any are interesting enough. Um, <laughs> no, time I don't necessarily to want to talk about ind- the individual interns, but I kind of want to talk about the last twelve weeks as a whole. What you guys have taken from it? Um, what we've learned from it? What kind of you know, what the what the process look like, and what the the new guys coming in. Look like because um, kind of butchered that a little bit because I I was having a chat with a few of them this week and one of the constant themes that came up was I wish I had lent in more I wish I got more out of it I, I wish I knew at the start what I knew now um, and I f- I was kind of thinking about it last night just that idea of like I wish I got more out of the thing and one of my responses to a few of them who said similar things were along the lines of like don't wish you got more out of it because you kind of you'll get out of it whatever you put in but you'll it'll also meet you where you're at so um you know for example one of the girls said oh, i wish i could do it again and i'm like hey you probably, probably can and probably probably tee that up but if you do it a second time you get more out of it because you have more context and you have more understanding of what's required and what's expected and things like that and you don't have like a you know four to six week learning curve yeah, at the start of it. And then you've only got those remaining four to six weeks where you've actually got the relationships and you know what's going on. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I kind of, my, I guess my thought process around that was like, what advice would you have for someone might be starting a job or might be doing a course or might be doing an internship like ours? What advice would you guys have outside of just, you know, dive in or lean in early on? Because, you know, yes, that's somewhat helpful, but it's not super helpful. What usable advice would you guys have? Nine times out of ten, the barriers only exist because you create the barrier. So just tear the barrier down, and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. They're imaginary. It's not a yeah. It's not a lean in and just do it kind of vibe. It's you're making something that's not there. Like it's only awkward if you make it awkward. <laughs> I'm talking to people like seriously. It's, Put that on a t-shirt. You going to say hello to someone might be quite confronting, but really, it's not that fucking hard. And and that can be uh, taken to a lot of different things as well as, you know, if you're not so confident in going and one, having a conversation with someone or two, going to correct something you see is wrong. That's only a barrier because you feel like it's a barrier. Mm. How do you break that down? That's the question. Yeah, it's it's almost like you need to get out of your own way and the only way to do that is to almost 
create try and create some awareness around like what it is that you do that stops you from doing the things that you want to do because i don't I'm, I'm a big believer from a personal responsibility standpoint that anything that we don't have the currently don't have the capacity to do that we're the reason for it um as as individuals like it's your fault um and it's your responsibility to do something about it and it's almost like the first step is cultivating a little bit of awareness around what works and what doesn't and what you actually need and what your biases are which is a really hard thing to do like Blind spots are called blind spots for a reason because you have no fucking clue that they exist. But by asking questions and by being around environments like this one, you can uncover them. Anything right? Any uh Can't any buy experience. <laughs> no, yeah. nothing for me. No, my response experience. is very similar to Mitch's. Yeah. Yeah. You can't you can't go into an environment being ahead of the curve. Yeah. You have to make the curve slow down. <laughs> mm. You can prepare as well yeah. as you can for it, but at the end of the day, You've got to do the reps and you've got to yep. spend the time and you've got to go through it. Yeah, I think Mitch was spot on with the, the barriers are just perceived barriers. They're, they're actually non-existent. They're a fugazi. Fugazi? Like, fugazi? They're a fugazi. Um, and it's similar like, with some of our newer members or members that have been around for a while like in their fitness journey. Like their barriers, <coughs> whether it be time, you know, they don't like big groups, like whatever, the barriers are just perceived. They don't actually exist. And what, again, what's a, do you have... Question for both of you. Do you guys have like a belief or a you know, part of your belief system that over the last couple of months, couple of years that you've realized, fuck, that was withholding my progress or that was holding me back, stopping me from able, being able to do the things I wanted to do? Big question for on the car. <laughs> More than likely, but I need some time to think about that. Not really. Think about the stage now where like, I say I don't care or it doesn't matter, not because that's the way I feel about it. I need a better way of saying it, but realistically, it's not as important as what you think it is. Mm. So, like, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's not life and death. And I'd say this to, like, especially teaching at uni recently, a lot of the students have gone, oh, Mitch, you're very different in the way you teach things and this and that. And I'm like, well, it's not that important. We're not saving lives here. We're playing with barbells (laughs) because it's fun. So, like, why make it stressful, serious? Like, it's really not that... Not 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 challenging. It's just not that like life and death. Like yeah. But the follow up to that is like you can't the you can't yeah. buy experience line is that you almost you need to go through that decade of plying your trade, you know, learning the nuance, being lost in the weeds to kind of get out the other side and kind of go, oh, fuck, <laughs> none, none of it really matters. Mm. And like you know, I kind of I would say I have like a voyeuristic view of the fitness industry at the moment or now because we experience what we experience in here but i'll watch and listen to different areas of it on instagram and and podcasts and things like that but i look at some of the things and some and and i know some of them are talking points but i look at some of the things people are arguing about and i'm just like who gives a fuck (laughs) none of it matters in the slightest like if people are moving doing things they enjoy you know connecting with other people then we're winning yeah. And that's all it needs to be. Yeah. That's probably one of the biggest shifts for me this year. Yeah. Um, just leaning to that. It doesn't really matter what you do at all. <laughs> like what you said, if you're moving and connecting with others, like you're on. You're on <laughs> which is like, which is frustrating to get to that point because it's almost like the, you can't tell someone that they have to no. find it themselves. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well that like, there's the experiential learning in it and it's, there's the, you, you don't get it until you get it. And, and like, like not to say that we're at the finish line because we're going to look back in, you know, in three years we're going to look back at maybe a conversation like this and be like, fuck mm. you guys, we're naive. But that's the best part about it, yeah. I think. You've got to go down every single rabbit hole to find out that there's just nothing down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just so insignificant, to be honest. <laughs> like you are. Let's we'll talk about the meaning of life again. No, well, yes and no, but we're not opening that can of worms. But really, like, it's not that important. Yes, we're having an impact on so many people's lives, but at the same time, it's we're technically not saving lives, even though we are. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah we're not in a life or death moment, fleeting. Yeah, which is why I have such a respect for like ambos and stuff like that because they are. Yeah, <laughs> that shit matters. That's different. There's like the perspective. Like I look at what we do as like you know it's almost like like a um, a consistent long term care care based approach where it's just like just give a little bit of care, you know. You know, guide, guide our members or, or our community to move in the direction they want whereas like what Ambos do what doctors do day in day out is like a hero approach it's like where they come in big intervention in the, in the moment 
to save someone or to fix something or, or whatever and then you know they give give them back to the carers there's almost like two two styles of um of help in that in that way yeah our job's a hobby half the time <laughs> yeah, half the time most <laughs> of the time it's like but you're coming to hang out we kind of sit here and go like like what we do is a hobby and in a nutshell it is and what we do is isn't a real job and we've all had that thought pro like thought or we've talked about it multiple occasions but outside outside of like the jobs like we mentioned that there's actually shit on the line most jobs there's nothing really on the line like there's nothing really at stake um which for me i look at as a great opportunity to create the thing you want to create or or build the life you want to build even like if i get a bit nervous before like a business to business meeting like like the great man alex bowes says to me the worst thing that can happen with this is you've sat down with someone, made a connection, had a coffee, and you turn up, you go around, turn away, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that good, is the absolute worst thing that can come from that interaction. Yeah. A good like ment- like mental um, pattern you can like follow in your head is like, all right, what's the worst can happen in this situation? And it might be like someone's about to front up to an exam, or someone's going to do a job interview, or someone's going to have a big conversation or a presentation somewhere. What's the worst can happen? I stuff it up. They laugh at me. You know, I learn from it and we move on. What's the best that can happen? I nail it. Everything's brilliant. You know, I'm seen as a king among men <laughs> and we, we, you know, I'm, we move on. Both of those things are like either end of the spectrum. Usually the, the results can be somewhere in the middle. Maybe you're geared towards positive, maybe you're geared towards negative. But at the end of the day, the main thing is you get to, you, you'll move on. Like literally this morning I had a meeting which I... If you had to ask me before that meeting, what's your absolute worst case scenario? Yeah. Like, I would, I would have butchered it. I, I absolutely <laughs> butchered it. But, like, we teed up this meeting a few weeks ago and we'd arranged for him to come here. We're going to have a coffee. I'll run him through a slide deck on the um, on the big screen. So I'm waiting. It gets about 10 past 11. I'm calling him, wondering where he is. And then I go into the Google Calendar and I've set it up as a, like, Zoom meeting. <laughs> and I don't know how I've done that. So I enter the call and he's there and I'm 10 minutes late. So we're already off to a bad start. I don't know how to share screens. So I'm fumbling trying to share a screen no, with this man. <laughs> yeah. and, and he's got to be gone in 10 minutes. So I've yeah. got 10 minutes to sort of rip through my presentation and hopefully get him on board. Fumbling through my words because I'm nervous because I'm late. Yeah. And I fucked up the screen sharing. And at the end of the 10 minutes, like he was stoked. Yeah. And he's going to try and sell it to his <laughs> higher ups. Yeah. So, yeah, despite me... Butchering it and it being the worst case scenario, it's still being <laughs> being in the room for, for that was actually was actually enjoyable because I'm like, glad you left. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I left when you started the conversation, but um, like from my point of view, you like said, "Oh, I don't know where he is," and because I was like, "When's when's your meeting?" And then you're like, "Oh shit, it's a Zoom meeting," and that was like, "Ah, suck it, suck it, you won't make that mistake again." Nah. And then you jumped on and you were like, you know, you, you're apologetic, but you were like, you were super um, approachable. And there was just like, oh man, like I'm so sorry, like I, I, I butchered this. I thought it was a, thought it was an in person meeting. And then you're like, dude, how do I share screens? And I'm just like, like you look at that and may, you know you can put the title like the titles, the um, labels are unprofessional and like you know unprepared and all of those kind of things. Mm. But on the other side, you look at like like fun, enjoy, like you look, you can tell you were like making a joke of it, um, yeah. easygoing, um, approachable, all of those things. And we go, which would we rather be and which would we rather the people that were around rather be? And like, I would imagine 95% of people would be like, I want the fun and enjoyable and approachable side. That's it. Yeah. I wasn't going to let him see that I was actually sweating balls. <laughs> <laughs> but even if you were like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like none of it matters. Life um, is about perpetually forgetting more than you remember <laughs> and failing more than you win. <laughs> I mean, you win some, you lose some. You just want to win more than you lose if you can. Yeah. You're not going <laughs> to do that though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. What else? What have, what have you got for us today? <coughs> Uh, me, what have I got for us today? Yeah, Didn't you oh, see the content? he's, he's yeah. like, I've got some things. You did. did I? Yeah, when we started. Well, I was just going to pepper you about questions about your car, and that's sort of what I had to run with. It's about like his obsession with B real. All right, oh, so social media so we things. Do have, we, yes. we have hired. Um, we do have a a somehow lovely new human joining the <laughs> team um, in a few weeks. So in preparation, she's uh, she's thrown us onto B Real. Can you guys tell me what the fuck B Real is? Correction, she has thrown you onto it. I'm not on it. <laughs> you Virtus are. is on it. You are Virtus. No. Oh, we are it's Virtus. Not, it's not me. It's not Virtus me it's, or Virtus you. It's Virtus. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so we're on Be Real. What the fuck's Be Real? So you know you can like upload a story to like you know Instagram, Facebook, or whatever. Uh-huh. This is essentially one story a day. Yeah. And the buzzer goes off at a certain time. It's random. I'm pretty sure. Tyler um, changed the system though. He waits till he's in the sauna with a towel on. Don't worry. What? <laughs> well, <laughs> he got caught out. Yesterday. I'm not. <laughs> I'm You're not like, going to post. Why are you running into the sauna? <laughs> <laughs> I I have I raced this. upstairs at my house once or twice to get a photo of a sunset when I'm sitting on the couch. But so it, is it, does it okay, defeat so the purpose? It sends you a notification well, at a certain time and a certain day. It's random, yeah. and it takes a photo of both your front and back camera at the same time. Okay, so you can't. So what like, you're doing in curate. the moment right now? No well, curate. You can. <laughs> oh, evidently, <laughs> you can cheat the system. <laughs> yes, but that's it. Plain and simple. Okay, so it's and, another, so it's, it's so it's more short of like form a content. snapshot of someone's day, yep. completely randomly, and it's so a play upon words, which I really like. So it's it's be real, but oh it's pronounced, <laughs> but it's like you know, it's your yeah. be real. Does that make sense? We're looking at it. So references here, Matty Jackson. Yep, yeah, oh boy, Darcy Murs on it. I don't know. I don't know if it's just people in their days, you know. So are there like so so are there are there comments? Are there like oh you can comment captions, etc. All the above. Now you know you got emojis on your iPhone. Well, we've got real emojis. Oh fuck me! What do you reckon of that? (laughs) Well, you know, it's just what's the difference? A little different from getting around the glitz and glam and Photoshop (laughs) photo gridded Instagram, you know. No, I agree, and I um unless you're Tyler, the the social (laughs) media side of things is is a. I mean, it's a big conversation depending on which way we want, which way we want to take it. But <clears throat> I look at social media as like there's just so many now. Like with your TikToks and your Instagrams and your Snapchats, people still on Snapchat. Not me. Um, and your that's and a guilty your reels. <laughs> oh, um, that's a guilty I'll, look. I'm talking group chats and that's it. You seem like the kind of person that would have had a Snapchat streak going for nah, like seven hundred days with a friend. Nah, hated it. Nah, good. Um, yeah, so it's like where do you spend your time? And you know the. The but I'm business. an old 25 year old. He's a young 24 year old. So there's, there's a gap between us all. And I'm yeah. a sprightly 30 year old. Washed um, up. 30 <laughs> washed up. Yeah, washed up. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, I've actually trained. Actually, let's talk about training in a minute. Um, so where, where where do you draw the line? Like where you want it. So, but this is it. I've drawn the line as I am only going to be on Instagram. Yeah. For posting. Face Facebook for Virtus Family, which I've. You know, haven't been on all that much because we haven't really been driving that. Um, and Reddit for content because, you know, what a rabbit hole that place is. Um, but then, like, yeah. you know, do I get on... What's Reddit? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> do I? It's the front page of the internet. Do I get on... Do I get on... Um, TikTok. TikTok to, to drive it for the for the kids to get them in the gym or the Be Reels or whatever because people my, my age, except for fucking Grant Rogers, aren't on TikTok. Yeah, you gotta, that's the uh, thing. You have to stay relevant with the population you want to stay relevant with. Well, this is why... You're I'm, old, washed up with kids why, now, so there's a difference. This is why know. we've, we've the, hired... The a medium social, is... Yeah, social, why, social media. Yeah, exactly. Which is actually... I thought... I realised earlier this week, and it, it, you know, it's it's certainly not the main reason, but one of the reasons why I'm all for this is because... You don't I have can to do it. <laughs> now get off social media yeah. completely and open that space in my life to spend with the girls or to, you know, watch Yellowstone or to read books. Or Can you do it when we're trying to have a conversation with you? Yeah, fucking <laughs> oath. Fucking oath. Should I'll, we talk uh, about that? Yeah, like go his on. inability to do multiple things at once. I think that's a, I think that's a strength. I block. <laughs> I think that's a strength. <laughs> I reckon KB might have something <clears throat> different to say about that. So there are two different types of focus, <laughs> yeah. right? So there's, <laughs> there's single focus where you are honed in on a task and then there is... Oh, fuck, I've forgotten what the other one is. Hey, you're defending yourself here. I know. It's like multiple focus or whatever. So, like... <laughs> and my cough stick slack for this, but guys are more likely to be single focus and girls are more likely to be everything focused. So, you know, I'll be sitting here and I'm focusing on the one thing in front of me, right? If I get thirsty, I'll zone out and stop talking to you for a second just so I can get some more. Oh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> whereas, whereas you, you're sitting there and going, like, the cushions are feeling nice, chairs are in the wrong spot like this is happening this is happening this is, this is happening and the way my brain works is if I'm focused on one thing I need to be focused on the one thing which I think is a good thing I think it's a positive thing you're right however what I need to be better at is not 
starting a thing and focusing on you and then going, oh, fuck, I need to do that. <laughs> I, have, I have never met someone. We've known each other for a while now. I have never, ever met someone who has such a good ability to just block everything out. <laughs> He's, hey, <just> Lost. <laughs> That's a skill. <laughs> Well, what, did you say something? <laughs> it's like a Wait, good 30 seconds later, though. Because I'll hear it and then <laughs> just process it really slowly. You look at I'm like, are, you, are you here? Like, <laughs> No, I, I think that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, I um, yeah, I guess jumping off social media is like the adult version of running away, but I'm going to run away soon. I'm going to jump off social media and I can't wait once George is uh, all set up. I've tried a few times and just keep coming I back. Have, Work. I I've spent more time on TikTok in the past few weeks than I care to admit, and I've never, I've never been a TikToker. I'll get you back on it. Actually, what? Hello. Uh, one of my favourite things is a, I'm in a, you know, like a Instagram group chat with <laughs> Coop and Craig, and no one is a bigger fiend for Instagram reels than Greg Day. I swear to God, mm. every day I get like thirty reels, and they're great content. So it's it's good. He can curate curate the Instagram content for us. But yeah, I think it's a. Uh, you know, it's a no, it's nice every now and again just to take stock and almost audit your life for different areas. Like look at your training, look at your social media use, look at your what learning things you're doing. You know, look at your food and nutrition. Who you hanging out with? Take them. Who you hanging out with? And just take a moment to go. What am I doing? Is this conducive to who I want to be and who I want to become? And if not, change it. Yeah, I won't be getting off anytime soon. But no. you, you use it how you want to use it, and you make of it what you want. So I just I don't want to look at it. Don't look at it. Let's talk about training. How's you've, training you've got a uh, you got a off season program mm. uh, released, <coughs> haven't you? I have, I have. I uh, I wrote a program for Dar- Darcy, and I was like, "Fuck, this is good." So I uh, packaged it up, chucked it on Train Heroic. So if anyone wants an off season program, it's there. And I decided that uh, you know. Just to give me flashbacks when I was nineteen, I'm going to do do a nineteen year old's program, <laughs> and it's been fucking great. I'm uh, what are we? For I think we're week five, so session three of week five tonight. Um, I have I was looking at my my train heroic stats the other day, and I, I don't fill mine in. <laughs> plain and simple. <laughs> follow your own advice. And I, I have genuinely do, almost done more sessions in the last five weeks than I have done for however many weeks preceded that for this year. Yeah, that, that checks out. That checks, that checks out. out. Yeah. Oh, um, Mitch, you seem to be learning into training and running a heap too. Like, there was a wedding on a couple of days ago and I had a few people come up to me and say, Is Mitch is looking good. He's, uh, yes and no. I think I've just... What's been happening? I'm going to let your dog out. Your dog <laughs> Everyone's just a little bit more acutely aware of it. Um, but yeah. What is your, what is your, what's your training week look like at the moment? I've run three to four times. Mm-hmm. Now that I have healthy knees. Plenty. Shout out Napajesic, period pain. <laughs> I might get sponsored, uh, seriously. They <laughs> sorted me out. Uh, yeah, run three or four times a week uh, and then lift three or four times. Go for a couple of walks. That's about it. A couple of saunas, a couple of ices. Nice. Yeah, so I guess the goals of my training are very much to accumulate a bit more mass. I think I've always had reasonably good strength. You are, you are, you are and you are looking a bit skinny. <laughs> I've been looking skinny for about 24 <laughs> years, so we're trying to do something about that. And I've never been a tracker of calories, so I always feel like I've eaten pretty good quality of food and always thought I've eaten enough to, you know, promote that muscle protein synthesis, but it wasn't until I started tracking earlier this year that you actually realise how little you're eating. So that's probably my advice for someone that's struggling to gain or lose weight, is actually just track your calories, even if you don't want to do it long term. Just do it for a week, seven days, see, you know, what you're hitting and you'll yeah. probably surprise yourself of how much or how little you're eating. So my coach, Alex Sandalis has got me on 3000 calories at the moment, which sometimes I really, really struggle to eat. Um, it's about double what I eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess one of my values is food quality and health, because I think if you're nourishing your body with an abundance of nutrients and, you know, foods that aren't going to promote inflammation, then, Ultimately, your body's going to be operating a lot better. You're going to be recovering better, sleeping better. You know, you're just going to be performing at a higher quality. So I sometimes really struggle to hit those 3,000 calories whilst eating some nutrient-dense, just whole foods. But yeah, um, yeah it's, been a, it's been a learning experience. And 
It's not as hard as what people think it is either. No. no I think it's a skill. It's like I look at it in like can, like it's a very similar skill to learn like budgeting or you know just getting control of your finances. It's, it's not, you don't have to follow your budget to a T. <clears throat> but if you have periods of time in your life where you you want a specific thing, you want to save for a house or you want to buy a car or you want to have a certain amount of savings or you want to go on holiday, having a budget is really the only way to ensure you're going to get there as quickly and efficiently as possible, right? So tracking your calories is the same thing. You have a goal, whether it be bigger, stronger, faster, um, leaner, lighter, whatever. And if you're not across the data in terms of what, change you want to make and then you know the the levers you need to push and pull to make those change then you're effectively just like you know throwing shit at a wall and hoping it sticks which to be honest isn't the worst approach in the world um better that than waiting for something to happen yeah if you're if you're aware of of what you're doing and like because you know, i've tracked calories very small periods of time throughout my life but i like it's not that I hate it. I just can't be bothered. It's can't be bothered. Um, so <clears throat> I will go, all right, so what's my goal for the next couple of months? And training-wise, it's just to get back to consistent training. Sure, I'd love to be stronger and a little bit fitter and et cetera, but um, it's it's more – It's I have broader goals. So I can be more relaxed with what I'm putting in my body and the food and you know, I can have a few beers and um, a few cocktails or whatever and not really – it doesn't matter. I just mm. maybe lean into training a little bit more and eat a little bit better the week after. But if your goals are specific and you have particular things you want to achieve and you want to do it within a particular time frame, counting calories, budgeting is the only way to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And I think people go wrong where they aren't weighing themselves every single day. So like that's, again, because I've never really cared about the scale until this year. Yep. And you need, that, you need that metric to know like actually what's going on in your body. So you need to like weigh same time every single day because you know you fuck me right <laughs> um what because this <laughs> saliva went down the wrong hole so there's going to be days where your weight's going to fluctuate yeah so if you're weighing yourself only on sundays for example there could be a gigantic fluctuation in your weight which you know, could be for any reason like the timing of your last meal the day before whether you've been to the toilet water weight etc the food you type of food you've eaten the carbohydrate content yeah, that's going to hold type water of sleep you had how stressed you yeah, are like stress all that sort of stuff so the best way to get a really accurate gauge on what's hap- actually happening with your body is to one track your calories yeah. and two weigh yourself every single day preferably at the same time with the same time final meal the night before which isn't always attainable but yeah yeah, yeah it's, but I this mean, it's just, just consistency and then get as many data points mm. as possible so that you have more more data to look at to then make decisions based off. And if, yeah, if that's too stressful for you, then you've just got to decide then is it worth the stress? How important to you is your goal? And if it's not that important to you, like yourself, then <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> it's And it's like, sometimes I think, oh, fuck, maybe, maybe I'm just, it's just cop out. No, maybe I just need, need to have a goal. Mm. But then I'm like, I don't really you care. You don't though. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Not me either. And even myself, I'm not that married to my goal at all. I just want to see if I'm, how if much I'm weight, fit, I, weight I can gain healthy, in a 12 month period. Cap- capable, mm. Pick up a heavy deadlift every now and again, and yeah. you know, run around the football field. Then I'm, I'm good. Yeah, and I think the it's even <coughs> better when you're washed up. Doesn't matter what you do. I'll train <laughs> what I want when I want, just because I can. Yeah, like purely. But I think that that's almost like because I'm talking to a few. We've we've had a nice little influx of. <laughs> he's struggling today. We've had a nice little influx of new members over the last week or two, um, which has been really cool. So we've been having a lot of like the initial conversation, like why are you here? What do you want to achieve? You know what are you, what have you done before and things like that and there it seems like and obviously these this is through the lens of Virtus and the people that are coming to us but it seems like more people are getting back into training as a means within itself rather than a means means to an end and I think it's a really important lesson for whatever you do whether it be you know, reading books or or training or or you know doing something at work is like try and make the thing both a means to an end and a means within itself. So like we want to, training, we want to see strength improvements and we want to, you know, be able to run further and we want to be able to do more in the gym, but we also want to enjoy the journey and enjoy the training and enjoy actually experiencing it, connecting with other people and and doing it in an environment where we love to be. And all that does is it 
allows it's almost like a positive feedback loop where you enjoy the training and it makes you better and it makes you better so you enjoy the training and then you can walk out of here and go do all the cool shit you want to do but that was just a little uh little summary of i like my conversations with a few people yep. yeah very good um two healthy knees a couple of healthy shoulders <laughs> Your calf for now. To be I'm all tooth. good. Yeah. Turns out you stop playing football, all your niggles go away. So yeah. I've just got to get. The <laughs> <laughs> My only job went away. I started doing anyway. a little bit of running too. By the way. Yeah. The lower shank issue. Uh, feeling good. If, just like that's what. Brought it to my mind when you said you stop playing footy or your niggles go away. Well, yep. my, my lower shank <laughs> issue is gone. So, I had aggressive shin splints and some Achilles tendinopathy things going on that have. All of a sudden, vanished when I've stopped pounding my lower limbs. It's almost yeah, like it sounds like a Ferrari with my twenty brakes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> He's um, not a Ferrari <coughs> by any stretch me. of imagination. Um, what was yeah. going with that? Yeah, so I started running. So I've never been a runner. Never enjoyed running. Never gone for runs. Is and your, uh, and I've never been a good runner. And it's it's because for the outsider looking into the fitness industry, I guess they see the holy grail of fitness as, you know, someone that can run, like, you know, a marathon runner. I guess for a lot of the general population looking in that aren't within the industry, I think that's what they'd perceive a really fit, healthy person to be. But there's not like for me, I prefer sprinting and being able to lift heavy weight and do cool things in that regard. So I've never been a runner, always been quite unfit. And people say to me, oh, shouldn't you be fit? You're a personal <laughs> trainer. So oh. What's your, uh, what's your line about running if you don't don't like it, Mitchell? Well, people that say they hate running, there's there's mainly one reason why they hate running. It's because they fucking suck at running. <laughs> and that's me, no and that's who, okay. No one who's yeah. good at running says they hate running. But I, I hate running. Yeah, but you're washed up. I'm good at running. Hey, if you're washed I up. I can still run. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate running. But got, a, got a bit of inspiration <laughs> you know the other day. used to be able to do it. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. Hence the washed up. Yeah. Like. This is diving back into B-reel. I saw Mitch's B-reel the other day. I think it was a B-reel and you were running in the rain. Always run and rain. underrated. I, I had a bit of head noise the other week, so I was pissing down rain and went for a run in the rain. Ran from my house to Virtus, which is about two k's, and it's phenomenal. It's a bit like Cathartic. country music, to be fair. It <laughs> never it's puts nothing you, it like never, country music. No, it never puts you in a bad mood. Going for a run in the rain never puts you in a bad mood. Yeah, like country music does. I mean, country <laughs> music I probably wouldn't have listened to long enough to ears are shifted, bleeding to shift my mood to good or to bad. So. Hey, um, last, actually, last time I checked, last few podcast guests, country music, I've sold insane them. Insane that. I've been smashing Yellowstone lately because new season in a couple of weeks, which we love. Phenomenal show if you haven't watched it, but a bit of country music in that. And every time someone starts singing, I think of you and I think, it's not fucking wrong. I know. Not, and I know not, it hurts people not, say com- that. He's not completely wrong. I know. And I know it hurts people to say that I'm okay with it. Oh, it's, I think it's good to, to spread the wings from a genre p- perspective. Ears are bleeding. You listen to um, Lime Cordial, I'm repeating, and <laughs> Sticky Fingers, and that's it. I do not listen to Lime Cordial. To be, like hey, to be fair, I do. we them. used to do the same thing. So, Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Remember young... Does anyone want to listen to the Avalanches? Young over and over no, and over you again. Oh, burnt that for Fuck. me. Um, Wildflower, get around. Uh, you brought up... Where you, you at? No, I was going to say, where you at now? Where do you want to be, you two, training-wise? I mean, this is summer now. Summer's coming. You've got no footy. 85 kilos body weight. Ooh. That's like a... Just love, a, I'd love to be and for, for no other reason, if you had asked me why 85 kilos, well, no other reason. I've just never, <laughs> I've never been 85 kilos. I've, be, I've barely ever been 80 kilos. So why not push it and see if we can push it that far? Um, uh, deadlifted 220 with the trap bar, I'll be it the other day. So I'd like to hit a. Nothing wrong with uh, the trap bar. We get it, your mates with Angus Bradley. You don't have to <laughs> shit on them, don't worry. That's um, a shit take, by the way. It was a horrible take, but let's not go down that path because that's a can of worms that I'm not ready to answer. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't be fucked either. Um, so I'd like to. Hit, your mates with him. I'd like to hit that with a straight bar. <laughs> um, 100 kilo bench press. Oh, can boy. barely bench 90, so I'd love to see how far I can push that. Again, like it's just a number. Wouldn't matter if it was 99.5. Just. It's just a number. Love that. Um, I just want to train consistently. I just want to get train, and, and like this is the this is the thing that I'm a lesson that I'm learning and I've learned over and over again for the last fifteen years. It's like it doesn't matter how much of a thing you do, how much reading, how much studying, how much writing, how much training. <laughs> You've just got to keep doing more of the thing. It's like doing something x amount of times outside of the adaptations that you get from that, it owes you nothing after that, which which is, you know, I think we're, when we're younger, we're taught to, you know, work hard and, you know, head down, bum up and good things will happen, which is true, 100% true. 
but but you have to keep working hard. There's no like finish line. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to look at like my training at the moment is like a horizon. It's like I'm looking towards you know more capacity and um, stronger, fitter, all that kind of stuff. But it's not a next week or next year or even a this decade thing. It's just like I just want to keep tipping in a uh, um, little bit, do a little bit a lot um, with my training. So at the moment I'm, I'm um, I, have, I haven't started running yet, which I should have a couple of weeks ago, but I'm what, four strength sessions a week, probably squeeze two running sessions into that um, and just just want to feel good. Just want to not be not be in pain next next football season, which um, yeah, probably not probably not going to happen completely. But yeah, not, and not then the, not the way you play. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm trying. To, I'm going to go outside next year. I reckon. Where are you at, Mitchell? I don't really have anything in particular. I mean, I do, but I don't. Like, I don't. I'm not training for anything. I'm not planning on going to play sport again. Like, I'm not. Probably run a marathon. That that's on the car. I've run a marathon before. I've done halves before when I was an athlete well, back in the day, <laughs> a few years ago now. <coughs> um, like I used to do like forty, sixty k weeks, easy. So getting back to that would be nice. Yeah. Um, strength, strength. I've always been pretty naturally strong without having to work hard for it, which sucks for a lot of people because they don't have that luxury. But like even like lifting wise, I don't really have any numbers in mind. Health wise, I mean, I don't have knee pain anymore, so that's a great bonus. So I don't have to tick that off anymore because <laughs> pain is common, to do some, but not normal. Yes. So if you have pain, fix it. No, I just do, you do some that. Ben Patrick knees over tours guy. Well, I was doing all that shit anyway, and it didn't help. So <laughs> I just found an anti-inflammatory that actually gave me no no pain. So if I don't take him for like three days, that's when it starts to come back. It's just like dull tendon pain, but I mean, take. One a day. It's Western like, medicine know. is a wonderful thing. If exactly, it's correctly. there for a reason, mm-hmm. and I'm very much in the boat of if you need to take it, just fucking take it. Like, yeah, you might not want to because X, Y, Z. <laughs> not looking yeah. at <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. like, it's seriously, it's I have no knee pain, and I'm what doing my gut health. <laughs> <laughs> doing more than I have ever done. So it takes me back to last year when I was in an ambulance with a dislocated shoulder, and he was trying to give me painkillers. I'm like, ah, no. Nah. He's like, there's a time and a place for this, yeah, and yeah, the I've, time and a place is right now. Hundred yeah. percent. Like, I'm not married to any of that stuff, so like, I'm fine. I'm taking these and it's not like I rely on them because if I don't need to take them I won't take them um, yeah, more, I mean I'm down more, more we actually have works. a thing at the Saints at the moment which we got bought up last night that between the assistant coaches and AFW assistant coaches and a few of us others are on like a, a skin fold challenge oh yeah so it's a thousand dollar buy in oh love that which has obviously of, come down from the head coach is Ross playing thanks Dal, bit of skin you, in the game thanks Dal you He's on a Fox Footy contract, so he's got yeah. a bit of cash in there, didn't they? Put me it's on my little old strength of power budget over here. It's a different world <laughs> yeah, it for is, those but boys. But anyway, uh, yeah, dietitians doing us some skinnies and whoever can take the most percentage off before like Feb, I think they were talking about last night. So I got more to it? play with than they do. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm good, down, a good place to be. I think I'm down like 14 kilos in like two and a half months. I'll nice. probably get down to like... Could you slip uh, slip the dietitian like two hundred bucks just to like inflate the numbers a little no, bit? That initially? doesn't change it. I mean, doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, just just to like get you over the line. Ah, nah. oh, you so you earn don't that shit. like obviously it's win win that shit. Win win anyway. Exactly. But yeah, and it's a bit of healthy too, and, so and it only helps build relationships, things like Team that. Team morale. I like exactly. That. Uh, I like so that. I'm sitting at like one hundred and eight. I think before we get down to like well, ninety five, maybe. Oh, like that—that that positive pressure is brilliant. Like I was telling the boys at footy, I was like, "We need to do a calendar again because <laughs> if we do a calendar in August, like everyone's got to be fit, lean, healthy by then. So you drink less beers and you you do less shit. It's up there, um, and you um, and you look actually look after yourself. So just having that thing you go to, and the the hundred, the, sorry, hundred, the thousand dollar buy in is a brilliant idea. Like the more of that kind of stuff, yeah, hundred percent. I'm like, I'm much working in the gym every day. I can do double sessions if I want to. <laughs> could sit in the sauna for three hours. Like, this is true. This is but yeah, true a, bit of, a bit of health for that. But yeah, mainly just run a marathon. I've got... I'll probably do Melbourne next year. Mm-hmm. Probably do run Melbourne in July. Do the half in July. Yep. And then maybe some Great. of the 2XU series in like Feb, March, maybe. I ran 5Ks Mars. at the start of the year and that like destroyed me. And I, I did pretty well at it. Levels to the shit. Accumulate, <laughs> levels the shit. Accumulate some load. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. <laughs> lungs, I'm coming in my first summer off. Lungs ever, burning. So. You, know, you know how this shit works. You know how stress <laughs> and adaptation works. Oh, Just no. be patient. Yeah. I don't practice what and I preach. Achilles like, and chin pain is pretty high uh, uh, risk factors for uh, 
under accumulation of yeah, load. And a, like this is the, you know back to the lesson with the interns before. It's like meet the thing where you're at. Like if you're just getting into running. Starts like so I'll be starting with some couch to one Ks. Yeah, seriously. Why not? But, but that's it. Seriously, like, it's the easiest place to start. Like, put the ego on the hook for a little bit. Think like there's no finish line, infinite game, and just fucking lean in. But I got six months off, so lucky me. Just here. It's good for us. Going from I've done mm. I've done a month of ninety hour weeks. Stop so that. Just about <laughs> done with a lot Stop of that. things. Stop that. Yeah. It just leads to leaving your fucking back door open. And nah, see, I think it's always been open because you know. <laughs> Play on. Been there for a year. Uh, <laughs> and side doors always been open too. Yeah. Side door, yeah. Any more for any more? Um, <clears throat> what are you watching at the moment? You said Yellowstone. Yellowstone You're watching Yellowstone? That. Um, oh, mate. Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power and House of the Dragon. Them dosage once a week. However, there's now a, whole, a two hour, two one hour holes in my life that aren't going to be filled for another, hour, another year and a half until they're back. Uh, good time to catch up on The Walking Dead. <laughs> Fuck Season 11, Walking phenomenal. Walking Dead lost me... Spoilers, if you haven't seen oh. season six of The Walking Dead. Press the skip 10 skip second button. Bit, but when, uh, wait, what's his name? Who died? Who got hit with the bat? Glenn. Glenn. I was thinking Greg. I was like, no, he's not, he's not Greg. Greg Day. When, when, when Glenn died, I was like, I think you've lost me. And I watched another season. I was like, done. And I just tried to get into it again because I love having a TV show on the go. Like, like TV, cinema, just fill me up. They make me happy. Um, one because it's escape, but I don't know. I just I, lo- I love everything about it. But yeah, I just I can't get back into it. And what are they up to? Season forty two now or something? Uh, eleven, phenomenal too. Yeah, there's a bit of a lull between season seven and ten, but eleven's <laughs> phenomenal. Okay, so and if you can if you can shit. persist through three seasons of <clears throat> meh, then the payoff's well worth I it. I got so much of that shit to watch in five months. Uh, lean into so it. TV, movies, and golf. I'm still enough. waiting on my new clubs though. It's a bit rough. Yeah. Uh, Timeline. That's a good time to plug the birthday bash yeah, Friday yeah, the just, November you, you 11th. You picked up on that, did you? Yeah, yeah. interesting. Oh, was um, that tickets need to be bought by next Friday. Yeah. You all got if a message. If we don't, so have, don't have enough tickets sold, I'm cancelling the birthday no, we, bash. No, we've covered our deposit, don't we? Have we? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll talk <laughs> um, about it. I told you, do, do the numbers. Um, I'm yeah, hearing, get around it. I'm so hearing be, people. Just lots of things. people. Just lots of people just need to buy their tickets. You know, <coughs> normal things. You'd be in the same boat for something you were going to. I haven't you, bought a ticket yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, we need to. We need to do that. Um, beautiful. Any? Uh, any more? No, I'm hearing people downstairs trying to open the door, but they should. Know, <laughs> they should know we open at 3 p.m. and not 2:57. Are, are you? Uh, right. I, I'm not even a. Uh, if you're not 10 minutes late, you're early person. So can, just can you let us in? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, the buttons on the camera. So it's been a pleasure, lads. Love your work. Um, good luck getting your car back, Mitchell. Oh, I have my car back for fuck's sake. Damn. Have a good day.